Okay, when you see Warren Buffett stacking cash, and trust me, that dude's stacking cash. Why is he stacking cash? Why is he stacking cash, bro? Dude, you're gonna be able to just literally steal legally. Listen, dude, I'm telling you, you wanna go from 10 million to 100 million? What got you to 10 million is not necessarily gonna get you to 100 million. Right, you've heard yeah. that? Yep. Okay, so what do you gotta do? Well, uh, I'm telling you what you gotta do, okay? Ask the question. If you don't know the question, that is your problem. I wish everybody had dads and moms and we ran through fields with daisies together. Okay, I wish that my dog doesn't shit in my house when I'm on this thing too long. Uh, now, you, now you're probably gonna yeah, be mad at me 10 minutes after we get off the call because you're gonna be like, who the oh fuck no. does he think he oh is? No. Anyway, you and John Sarasani should do a boxing match for a fundraiser, who would win? Hold on, call John Sarasani. You're on Brad Vice. Matt Diamond, and the topic would be he thinks he's advice. Still Why would you need angel investors? For a company startup. Company startup in five seconds. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I was like, I'm a robot. <laughs> yes, yes. So I was wondering what you think about um, pointing towards investors when you have a startup or going towards the route of just waiting until the money's good uh, to pump into it. What's your, what's your thoughts on that? Well, why do I only have two choices would be my first question. Are you a limited thinker? Is it either A or B, no, black I'm, or white, up or down, well, start or stop? I mean, if there's Are there more, no other options yes. available in the world? That no. would be my first question, youngster. Hey, what is your name, by the way? Yes, yes, yes Matthew, Matthew Diamond. Diamond. Matthew Diamond? Yes, yes, yeah. Like the like the ring. Yeah, is that is that your real name? Yeah, that's actually my real name. That's a kick ass last name you got stuck with, dude. Dude, I appreciate that, man. Thank you. Sounds like a freaking male stripper's name. No, Come see the thunder from down under starring Matt Diamond. <laughs> Here's my answer with all kidding aside. You ready? You want to get investors as soon as you can in some cases. And then in other cases, you don't ever want to get investors if you, if you can. So the question would be, depends mm -hmm. on the details, or the answer, I should say. It depends on the details. Should I get investors or should I not get investors? You know, well, you should get investors if you need investors, because without them, you're going to fail. Well, then it, you need to get investors. But if you're like, I don't need investors, well, then why in the hell would you even entertain investors? All right, anyway, there's two reasons you want to consider investors. Number one, you have to have them or you're going to go out of business. You don't want to go out of business, right? Well, then get investors. Okay, that's, that's uh, the old one time. And then the other time would be when the investors can accelerate and, and provide more than you would have. In other words, let's say you would have grown it to a $10 million company in 10 years, right? But with investors, you would grow it to a $100 million company maybe in three years. Mm. Well, again, depending on what your actual long-term goals are would determine whether or not I would advise you to bring on investors. But I would say just regular general advice would be, or Brad advice, I should say, would be if you can help it, don't sell any of your company and build it mm. yourself because then you don't butt heads with anybody but you. See, I, 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 I really do love that advice. Like, I, I think that is tremendously helpful. I, I, I really appreciate it. The, the only thing is, and the only, um, the only counterfactor that pops into my head is, is regarding the, the patent. So me and my friend, we thought of this, this concept. This, hey, there's a story. There's a story. Y yes. <laughs> there, there's a, I mean, a, a story, but you know, an expedited, you know, edition, not, not the, the long, vast version. Um, but, have, but hey, basically let me, we, let me, add, looking, hey, ready? Hey, watch the magic finger. Remember the magic finger? Okay, if I just for everybody knows the rules, like you know, Portnoy, one bite, everybody knows the rules. Stories, everybody knows the rules, and then click, we go to the next caller. So the rules are: my finger goes like that for any reason, the call gets dropped. We move on to the next one. We got Andrew from Atlanta calling in to get some adv advice from Brad Lee.
And that's the Brad Vice. And what are the rules? If you do something with your finger, they hang up on you. <laughs> no. You must have been watching the last five minutes. He said, if I do something with your finger, you hang up on me. No, that's, that's instructions to my crew. The rules are no stories. And the reason why I say no stories, guys, is because we'll be here for 90 minutes and I can, I can take one caller and everyone gets bored. Like... We're trying to spread some kick-ass advice out into the world and help people solve problems. Like, you're calling in because you got a question. you got a, a problem of sorts, and you're getting Brad's advice to hopefully get past it. And even though I say it funny sometimes, it's good freaking advice or I wouldn't be giving it. So, and, and by the way, sometimes mm -hmm. I'll pull out my phone and tap into my extensive Rolodex, and I'll get you an answer from someone else instead of me if I don't have it. But this is Brad advice. So, when I... Uh, say no stories. It's simply so we can we can have time to help more people. Does that make sense, Andrew? And by the way, yeah, a lot yeah, of times, no, a lot definitely. of times, uh, I should make two more rules. Remind me. Uh, and, and and another uh, reason is because like I'll ask you questions if I need them. What if I don't need them? I can just answer your question and you can go take action. Mm -hmm. You don't need to tell your story, do you? But see, most people, folks, and yeah. this is this is a. Uh, Almost like a coaching program, too. Why? Well, because I'll, I'll give you my opinion of things. And my opinion is a lot of times people want to tell their story because they want to be heard. Well, again, this ain't a, f you know, <laughs> lay on my shoulder and tell me your problems. It's advice. Okay. okay. So, thank, thank you. you. Um, you're, you're married, right? I am. Okay. okay. So as I'm sure you know, when you are successful financially, um, everyone, every girl wants to get married to you for real. So that's not um, true. It's more common than if you're not financially successful. We could agree on that. I would say that when you're financially successful, a lot more women find you more attractive than they would have if you were a broke joke. Yes. But just because okay. you have money doesn't so mean do women fall. Hey, Andrew, I'm just telling you, just because you have money doesn't mean women are going to fall in love with you. It means that you're going to attract more opportunities to allow them to fall in love with you or get them to fall in love with you. Having money doesn't make them fall right. in love with you. Just FYI, bro. And if anybody out there thinks that's true, you know, put it in the comments. I'd love to debate your ass. Call in, talk to someone who thinks just having money makes them fall in love. But I get your point. You're saying, hey, well, if you... If, I didn't say, I didn't say love you. I dude, I got this recorded, fool. I got this recorded. I'll hit rewind. We'll, we'll, no, I didn't say they're going to want to love you. I said they're going to want to marry you. That's too different. Well, again, I'm, you, you might have said that, but let me just say this. M wanting to marry you, for example, I would assume that means they love you. I said, at least where I'm from in Atlanta, a lot of women are not looking for love. They're looking for a come up. Which Yee! takes place in the form of marriage a lot of times. I hear you. Okay. What's your question? What advice you need? Well, I'm just wondering, um, do you believe that, like, obviously you believe that your wife was a good person to marry, and that is a financial decision, marrying somebody. It, it's going to tie into your finances one way or another. Do you so don't I'm ask, right? Do you believe, <laughs> do you believe that, Someone you marry maybe 15, 20 years down the line could have changed into someone who's not the same. And do you consider that um, an acceptable risk? I mean, obviously you do, but... Um, obviously I do, but you do have you to consider understand. consider that a risk? Well, Andrew, you have to understand. In my situation, you said obviously you do. Well, number one, if, if, if somebody's worried about divorce in the future and, and you're, you're like, hey, what if this don't work? Well, then don't get married. Okay? You only should be getting married if you are 100% believing that it's going to work. Now, again, it might not work. Once, once time tells, you might you might bend correct. But if you're not 100% sure you want to be married forever to the person you're going to marry, I would suggest don't get married at all anyway. Why would you think, you know, well, what if shit don't work out? Like, why, why would anyone actually proceed with a wedding and be married to someone when they think, oh, what if it don't work out? You know, well, what, I mean, I don't what if think I come home and the neighbor's banging like her that. better than I did? <sighs> what do I do? Like, I don't <laughs> do that, dude. You know what I do? I say, let me ask myself a question. Do I love this person and do I want to spend the rest of my life with them? And then the answer is yes at the time. Because again, I've been married twice. Third wife heard me say that she might get pissed, but I don't count her because because it, it, wasn't, it wasn't real. But <laughs> I've been married twice for real. And you know, in my opinion, if, if someone says they were married 15 times, I'd say, was each one better than the last? 
You know, I don't ever see someone going, damn it, my ninth wife, I should have just been nice to her. But there are people out there that you'll hear that from. Why? Because they regret losing somebody. Well, what, 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 where does that go? Well, here's where it goes, bro. If you're not 100% sure you want to marry somebody and be with them forever, I would say just don't get married to them at all. But we're going to the gold digging question. So a guy's got money, all these gold diggers out there looking for to come up. What else? What's your I mean, question? I wasn't question? really even going in the direction of the gold digging. I just have a cousin. I know it's not a story, but he basically lost millions. No, this is a, this is a story, but I'm enjoying it so far. So I'll allow this one to continue. No, oh, literally. Like, why are you asking this, bro? You you wanted some advice related to somebody like getting married, not getting married. Do I think it's a good risk to get married, dude? Honestly, I think marriage is a really, really stupid thing to do financially. There is no benefit to getting married. Uh, for the person with the money, okay? There's no benefit financially. Mm -hmm. See, I'll get, I'll get the word financially edited out and get roasted for saying this, but it's still the truth. There's no benefit to marriage financially, okay? If I, would, I would advise if someone came to me and there was no emotion involved whatsoever and someone said, should I get married to this person? I'd say the fact that you're even me if you should means you shouldn't. Because you're not certain. If you're not certain, don't do it. Now, when it comes to, do I think, you know, chicks like guys with money better than they do with not, no money? Absolutely, bro. And so if you have money and you're asking yourself like, man, should I even get married? What if it screws around in 14 years? Well, dude, as theoretically, that's, that's real. Happens all the time, bro. Divorces are real. Okay. 67% of divorces, uh, are, I think, 67% now end in divorce. What do you think the other 33% ends up, Andrew? Death. <laughs> okay, so you're either going to get divorced yeah. or you're going to die. That ain't a very good proposition. Do you have a prenup? I don't need a prenup because I don't own anything. Guys, prenuptials are for people with a lot of assets and a lot of things and a lot of possessions and a lot of wealth and a lot of money. Prenups are not for people who control assets and money. They they got to be for people that have them, and I don't have anything. I just control everything. So you so you set it up a certain way, basically. See, Andrew's smart, dude. Listen, dude, you're from Atlanta. What, what's your background? What do you do for a living? I'm an entrepreneur. I just started a business, but I've been in software sales for the last like ten years. And you're an entrepreneur now. That's code for out of a job. No, I have. I started a business like three months ago. It's been going good. Right, so when I said, what do you do, why'd you say you used, what you used to do? Because it's still new, I guess. It's weird to say that. Not My murderer's weird. here? What? <laughs> it's in construction. Oh, you're, you're, you started a construction biz? Yeah, it's like, well, it's really water restoration. So, you know, drying out properties, basically. Good margins well, there. Well, listen, that's what I call a blue-collar work or home services. And blue-collar work and home services is going to get extremely valuable over the next five years, more valuable than it's ever been, because there's less of you than there's ever been. So again, try to have AI come fix your toilet. Ain't going to happen. Try to get freaking AI to put a roof on your house. Try to, put, try to get AI to come uh, fix water filtration. Come, come get AI to freaking come and do water restoration. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, dude, yeah. you jumped in a good business, bro. Go blow that shit up and, 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 and do your thing. You're not married. You were just asking the question. You meet a girl that you're so sure you ain't got to call me and ask, then just go ahead and do it without my advice, my friend. And if you end up 14 years later, divorced, you know what you do? For whatever it is the judge tells you to give her. Okay. And you go build it again. And guess what? One day you're going to get it right, my brother. So don't worry about failing because that's part of the recipe. How old are you? 30. Shit, I got underwear older than you, friend. <laughs> anyway, hey, man, hope I answered yeah, your question. Okay. I don't even know what the question was, but I'll, I'll hit you on the backside. Thanks for calling in. Yo, Eric. Eric and I had a question about where to invest my money from a side business I have in addition to my full-time job. What's up? Who am I talking with? Eric, how are you tonight? Eric, what's Besides up, buddy? Good living the <laughs> Not much, man. Where are you calling in from? So, uh, Northwest PA. Northwest PA. You know, Le you know Leland Charles? No, but he sounds like a fantastic guy. He sounds like a freaking wonderful dude. I'm going to throw a party in <laughs> Leland Charles' honor. What can I help you with, Eric? Yes. What Brad advice do you need, buddy? So 
I work full time as a medic. I teach CPR on the side as a side business. It's through an LLC, the whole spiel. Um, I've watched some of your on real estate in terms of like judicial sales tax and also just real estate in general. I guess my question is because my business is picking up on the side. So we're, am I better off throwing money at say judicial sale and then fixing the house up? Or am I better off putting that money into turnkey and then basically turning it over to property management while I accrue more real estate? I need you to say have other advice for where to put it. Where to put your money? So where the money I'm pulling in from my CPR business, I'm looking at dumping that into real estate. I guess my question is, am I better off going to, because I've seen some of your stuff on. Like, but, see, there's where, where you get confused. I can't, dude, don't, don't tell me all the reasons. This is where I'm getting confused. You, you said, hey, I, <laughs> I make money from CPR side business, teaching people. I do with that money? Should I put it into real estate right. or? Unless you had any other alternatives, because I know you've preached about real estate a little bit. Again, you must be thinking I'm Grant Cardone, but you know, I've never <coughs> preached. I've never preached about real estate, although I should have been preaching about real estate because it made my buddy a billionaire. But real estate's a great investment, guys. It gives you tax advantages. It appreciates over time. It's never depreciated over time. Like again, real estate is always the best play that I know of. Now. You can get into crypto and Forex and all kinds of ways to make, to make far better returns than you will on real estate, but they're also far riskier. So again, what's your risk tolerance? With the side business, it's See, now you deep. just said with the side business? Like, dude, brother, what's, the, what's, that, what, what's your risk tolerance? That was the question. Hi. Oh, you have a high I risk tolerance? Oh, I thought you were saying yeah, hi like, to me. I, I, was, I was about to say, dude, I'm in a zone. He just said hi. But no, you meant hi. You have a high, high toleration for risk. Yeah. Then, buddy, listen, if I were you, I would freaking go and I would stack your cash and I wouldn't make any move whatsoever. I wouldn't invest in anything unless it was just unbelievably freaking tempting. And I would save your money, stack your cash because there's a correction coming. And when that correction comes... The people with the cash are going to swoop in and get all those undervalued assets. Trust me. Okay, when you see Warren Buffett stacking cash, and trust me, that dude's stacking cash. Why is he stacking cash? Why is he stacking cash, bro? So here's what I'm telling you. Stack your cash. Why? Because, dude, there's going to be opportunity, but you're going to have to have cash. And when I say cash, I mean the ability to buy liquidity. You know, if you can... If you can you know, well, well, McGold, he was talking about, you know, cash. I'm talking about any kind of freaking liquidity, valuable thing that you can trade for assets because in the very near future, there's going to be changes in the economy. Like, for example, you know, when, when, when interest rates start to come down, okay, what do you think is going to happen? Okay. You're going to have more buyers get in the market. And okay, stuff, then, and, and, then, and, and then the inventory. Are gonna go up. That's right. And then what happens to the inventory? It starts to get a little scarce. Well, guess what? What happens when the freaking people that borrowed money at, you know, 6% or, or 3% for five years took little arms and variables are now their, their shit up and their, and their payment on their building goes from 30 grand to, to 88 grand and no longer does it make financial sense. What do you think they're going to do with those properties? They're going to dump them. Say that one more time and let's make it a mother. They're going to dump them. They're going to dump them, dude. And, and, and the people with the cash are going to swoop in and get those assets at a freaking fraction. And, dude, you're going to be able to just literally steal legally. That's just the sad truth. I, you know, I'll hear all the bleeding hearts. Oh, you're going to steal people's property? What a dickhead. Listen, guys, it's called opportunity. So when someone says, hey, should I buy real estate? My answer in general is always going to be absolutely, dude. You can't go wrong with real estate as long as you're willing to hold it long enough in general. But at the end of the day, I wouldn't buy anything right now. I wouldn't buy real estate. I wouldn't buy Bitcoin. I wouldn't buy, I wouldn't buy tampons. 
I wouldn't buy You're diapers. Stopping. Like at the end of the day, I'm stacking cash. And when that cash gets high and everyone's like, what are you doing, dude? What are you doing? You're just keeping that in the bank? That's stupid, dude. You should be putting that somewhere, dude. Just keep holding. And then you'll know, dude, and so will the whole world when it's time to go, thank God I got Brad advice. Ben, yep. we watching the finger. How so, sir? All right, buddy. Love you. Frankie, what's up, buddy? What's up, Brad? How you doing? Dude, you're on Brad Advice. How can I help Frankie today? Hey, Brad. So, yeah, so I just had a question for you. Um, basically, I've been growing my company for the past two years and nine months. Uh, we are going to hit $10 million this year, so eight figures, and just trying to figure out how to get to nine figures. So I'm assuming that you're at that mark. I don't know, motherfucker, but when there. you figure it out, call me back and let me know how you did it. Yeah, sir. No, dude, Fair I'll tell enough. you how you do it. You ready? You got a pen? You got a piece of paper? Or are you just shooting the shit? I always do. I'm ready to go. All right, listen. Here's how you do it. Write this down. Number one. Mm -hmm. Number one. Mm -hmm. You ready? Do more. Yep. You already yep. know the answer. What's number two? I don't know. Make more money? Nope. Get better. What's okay. number What's number three? Scale. Um, scale. Scale. Okay. okay, do more, get better scale. What's that mean? People are going to be like, well, no kidding. Listen, dude, I'm telling you, you want to go from 10 million to 100 million? What got you to 10 million is not necessarily going to get you to 100 million. Right? You've yeah. heard that? Yep. Okay, so what do you got to do? Well, uh, I'm telling you what you got to do. You got to do more, you got to get better, and you got to scale. So doing more means like mm -hmm. how, many, how, how much are you marketing? How much money do you spend in marketing right now? Spend more. How many calls are you making? Make more. How many, how many you know, things do you do to generate the revenue you're generating? You're making $10 million. Are you managing those KPIs? Do you know how you're doing it precisely? Because if you don't, I would, say, I would say get your precise analytics down as to how that money is being produced and then do more of those things. Can I get a come out? You understand? You understand? You understand? Do yeah. more now. Yes, sir. Let me ask you. No. Nope. In regards to the KPI, nope. I got to give you my Brad those? advice, my friend. I got to give you my Brad advice. Oh, I need stop. a mute button, dude, because sometimes they don't want to stop. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. Frankie. Yeah, I'm here. Don't get all in butt hurt now. I'm not. I'm here. You don't hear me. All right. Number two. Yeah, I hear you. You hear me is the question. <laughs> hey, I hear you. number two, you understand do more or not? Because again, a lot of people think, oh, he's being I a smart ass. Guys, listen, if you want to double your business, do more than you're doing now. Do exactly what you're doing now, but just do more of it. It's not rocket science. They want you to think it's rocket science, mm -hmm. so you'll buy their books and buy their consulting and buy their coaching. But guess what? It's doing more than you're doing now, dummy. That's all. You want to do a, if you're doing 10 million doing what you're doing, do you think if you did 10 times what you did, you would have made 100? Yeah. Okay, so do yeah, 10 times sense. what you're doing. Now people are like, well, no. Well, if, that, if it's so simple, then why aren't you doing it? And you know what they're going to say? Well, it can't work. It can't be that simple. I'm going to try and figure out some rocket science answer that I'm never going to find and I'm never going to grow my business. Why? Because I'm a limited thinking son of a bitch. You keep it simple, mm -hmm. Frankie. You say, hey, I, I'm going to call, I'm going to ask Brad. What's his advice on growing his company from 10 to 100, which is a good goal, by the way. So 10 to 100, you want to 10x that bitch. First bit of advice would be like, dude, 10x is my buddy Grant. You should be calling his live call-in show and asking him. And then I'd go, oh, wait, he don't have one. Okay? He don't have a live call-in show. I'm going to get him on this one, and we can call in and ask Brad or Grant. Everybody tag Grant Cardone and say, man, get on Brad's show. Everybody misses me and him together anyway. But, dude... You want to 10x your business. No problemo, okay? You do more than you're doing now. You get better at what you're doing, and then you scale. Now, I'm going to walk through each one because it really is the way you do it. You do, you do more marketing. You do more phone calls. You do more. And, and by the way, when you do more phone calls, you're going to get more uh, prospects and opportunities. And then those opportunities turn into sales, and those sales turn into growth, and the growth turns into more growth, and then more resources and the ability to buy those resources. Make sense? Yeah. So you just do more. Like, did you do more today than you did yesterday? And a lot of people will go, you know what? I didn't. Okay, well, then now you're lying to yourself because guess what? You already know, bro. You already know. Mm -hmm. One is get better because are you training your people, yes or no? Yes, we do trainings every morning. 
you do trainings every morning. Tell me what the four key ingredients for training is. Uh, like what we do or yeah. like what you think I should be doing? What, what do you do? I mean, do? We, we, re- we, we rebuttal. We listen to game film. Uh, we do like personality meetings because a lot of my guys are dry. So like we teach them like to like be And you do that every morning? Like mess around and talk to them. Listen. Every morning, five days a week. Okay. Well, you got to have a couple of things to make it training. Good content. Do you know the right way to do it in the first place? Uh, yes or no? Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's what. That's good content. You need good content. Repetition. Are they hearing the same thing over and over and over and over? Yes, they do. Uh, I I really doubt that one because if you just said you do different every morning. Well, we do five days a week. Like we do like one thing set. Uh, well, week, do, when do you like start repeating it? Because if you if, if if you do it every morning differently, bro, it's, there's no repetition there. Just because you do it yeah, every Monday morning doesn't make no. it repetitive. Repetitive is like saying, you know, Billy. And then saying Bob, and then saying Ted, you know, it's, it, it becomes repetitive. You know, repetition would be Bob, 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 Bob. Pretty soon you can realize your name's Bob. See, people don't even realize, dude, when we were kids, if someone would have said your name once, you never would have known it. If when you were born, someone said, listen, we're calling this kid Frankie, and no one said it again, guess what? You wouldn't know your name's Frankie. You understand? Repetition is the key. Yep. So you have to go through the same content over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Then the next one is practice. Mm-hmm. And then the next one's accountability. Someone's got to inspect what they expect. But if you're doing 10 mil, bro, you're doing pretty damn good. And what'd you say? How old are you? 25. Yeah. See, dude, you're young at 25, dude. I was still freaking hunting chicks and blowing paychecks. Like when I say blowing paychecks, <laughs> I mean the whole thing. It wasn't that yeah. big is the point. Like I could literally cash my check and, and spend it in the same day. Yeah. So at 25, you're doing 10 mil, bro. Good for you. Keep rocking that. Thank but you. just do more of it. And then number two, get better, dude. Train your people, train your team. If you're the boss, take training, you know, start figuring out that you can't get to a hundred million with the people you got right now, or you'd already be at a hundred million. Or again, you're new, either one. Doesn't sound like you're too new. So it means you're going to have to add people. You're going to have to scale. You're going to have to leverage technology. You see what I'm saying? And that's number three, scale. So you do more, you get better, then you scale. And you scale by leveraging technology and people. So you have to be prepared to hire, onboard, train, and develop people. Are you ready to do that, yes or no? Yes, I am. Okay, then what are you waiting on, dog? I'm going to go take your advice. Come on! That's why it's called Brad Advice, brother. <laughs> Look for the finger, Ben. All right, appreciate you, man. <laughs> why don't you ever say goodbye? And I'm like, what do, you, what do you want me to do? Like, it takes so long, and it's just a waste of time, you know? Okay. Okay, all right. I will. All righty, you too. Okay. Okay. Okay, bye. It's like, I say, I'm leaving. Okay, bye. Boom. It's over. I don't want another word coming out of your mouth. Let's take a comment question. Are me and Grant Cardone brothers is the question from the comments. This is why I don't take comments from questions, because they're not that good. Um, We're brothers from other mothers, okay? Grant Cardone is my brother from another mother, you know? But we do look alike, people say, other than, you know, the height difference and the age difference. We do talk alike a little bit because, you know, we hung around each other for 12 years, you know. He's copied my style a little bit. But uh, other than that, yeah, we're, we're, we're similar in ways and very uh, different in others. Stephen Walker, you made it in, brother man. How you doing, Brad? Good. Hey, hey, uh, do you remember Do you remember when I come to Vegas and visited you? Stephen Walker. I was on Dropping Bombs, num- number nine, brother. Dag, dog, are you the dude that's like, uh, hey. I, f- I forget where you're from. Where are you from again? I'm from Kansas. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. What's up, buddy? Hey, How you doing? I, I, I kind of fell off. Hey, the last time we talked, Dude, I got to go said, listen hey. to episode nine. You said, hit, you said, hit me up when you get off the streets, remember? You said, you said whatever you get off the streets, hit me up. Hey, hey, and yeah. I'll tell you, I wasn't on the streets just yet, but I have been since then. Dang. I ain't no more. I'm doing pretty. Uh, hey, I'm doing pretty well, Brad. I'm okay. I got my kids around me. I, I'm I'm being a family man and whatnot. But I want to stay off the streets. You got any advice for that? Ooh, Stephen Walker's got a good question. I mean, I just want to. I, I want to stay off. You know what I mean? I, I'm off the streets, but 
I know it's just, you know, one or two choices wrong could send me back. All right, you want to stay off the streets. And what does Brad yeah, think? Dude, give okay. it to, hey, give it to me real, dog. Don't worry about hurting my feelings because, you know, I ain't no pussy. I will. I'll give it to you real even if you were a pussy. Okay. Yeah, I know you would. I know you would. That's what I like, Brad. That's what I like. That's a real Bradley. <laughs> yeah. In, in other words, like you know, and I know that I, that I that I've been on the street. Um, there's probably a million people that wouldn't admit they've been on the street. You guys, I Stephen Walker. Here's how you stay off the street, brother. Because I was on the street, and you know, I know people that came up. They're like, "Listen, I'm I'm on the street. You know, I was living in a bush, and uh, you know, I, I how do I get out of there?" And I'm like, listen, you know, I'll tell you how I got off the street. Instead of living in a bush, I just found some. What's that mean? I found me a female that had a home, right? I was homeless. She had a home. Partnership, okay? Find partnerships, you know? And when it comes to you, I, if I can remember correctly, you, you, you did drugs of some kind, yeah? Yeah, I was, I was smoking the marijuana, and then I ended up getting on the mushrooms when I was down in Texas. No, fuck, yeah, dude. But I'm, Walker, I'm, I'm, weed and mushrooms I mean, ain't going to put you on the streets. Well, hey, hey, hey. Well, then that, then I got, a, I got a different combination of things then. You know, I got something else going on then, Brad. No. I'm saying, I'm saying the last few years, like three or four years, I ain't done no dope or nothing. I See, like Steven, Steven's the type of dude you got to keep talking to. Otherwise, you're worried about him showing up to your house wanting to finish the conversation. Isaiah, you made hey, what's it on. Up, Brad? How's it going? Dude, if I was any yeah, better, I'd be you. I'd be on the phone with you. All right, so uh, working on my personal development right now. Uh, Sounds like a story. Sounds I don't like have a, a whole lot of cash flow coming in, but I'm getting by, you know, with the help of family. And then I'm working on, like, the mindset. And, Isaiah. Uh, personal Isaiah, branding. That Isaiah. Kind of stuff. Isaiah. Yes, sir. What's your question? Uh, I want some advice from the personal development. Because I've heard you say good quotes like, you are where you are because your mindset, your yeah, skill see, set. Isaiah. Isaiah. I understand, bro, that you've heard some. I said, but but when I say to somebody, including you, because you're the example, everybody gets to see what's your question, and you guys yeah. don't you guys don't know it. That's freaking some Brad advice right there. Like guys, figure out what it is you want to know before you call. You don't call just to freaking ramble and then end up getting off, and then you don't get no help. So to me, it's like, dude, what do I what do I want to ask this? And then it's like, oh, I want to ask him, how do I get rich? Or, you know, hey, and, and when you start doing that, you start thinking of the story like, you know, oh, I, I want to find out why my girl did this and that and this happened and that happened. And, and how do I get here and there? And it's like, where do I get? And, but, but what happens, you start telling your own story again in your head. And dude, your story is why you are where you are. You got to stop telling yourself these fucking stories. Everybody stop with the stories. Okay. Ask the question. If you don't know the question, that is your problem. Okay, that is your problem. Like, think, man. What do you want to know? And I'm not just talking to freaking Isaiah. I'm not beating up on Isaiah. I'm talking about everybody. Figure out what it is you want to know. Okay? And then if you get a chance to ask somebody who's done something that you want to do and you get a, you know, let's say you're in the elevator and, and whoever it is that you want to, you know, emulate is in there. And, you, and you know, well, I, you know, my brother, he came home one day and, you know, caught my wife and him, my brother Alex. Now, he was a nice guy all the way up until about 1941 when my granddaddy came home from the war. But, you know, my uncle was supposed to go to the war with my granddaddy. And it's like, what's the question? You guys keep telling these stories in your head over and over and over, and it keeps you right where you are. Stop with the stories. Anyway, go ahead, Isaiah. What's your question? Man, I just need some general life advice. And I'm trying to get better. I've uh, took in your sales course before. I've listened to you speak. At the <laughs> Here it does it again. I say, and, I love uh, you, brother. I love you, dog, yeah. and I know you're going to make no, it. Listen no. to me. Listen to me. I know you're going to make it. You know what? You. Listen to me. I know you're going to make it in life. It's going to be painful along the way. You're going, to, you're going to curse me a couple of times for hanging up on you. But you're going to make it one way or the other, brother, because you're a fighter. Can you be our partner for Solar Canada, the Faith Solar Canada? Guys, if you want me to invest in your companies, simply send me 
a proposal to Brad at LightspeedVT.com with your proposal or deck. Because I, 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 I would love to invest in companies, but I got to look at the details. And this call ain't about details. It's about advice. And I can't give you advice. So my advice is you want me to invest in your company? Don't call and ask that on a call-in show. Send me a proposal. My email is brad at lightspeedvt.com. Can I get it? Come on. So my question is for the young men, um, teenagers, that are navigating today and it's society, how social media is she so kinda sounds like that. disgusting. Um, she kind of sounds like that. And just Miss the influence. America and Pageant for, when she says. And for the kids <laughs> and that don't, or the boys that don't have fathers, like what advice do you have for those young men? For young men that don't have fathers? Yes, for young men navigating the world today as it is um, really nasty. <laughs> I know, but when you when you paint um, the when you paint the picture like that and kind of try to tell me a story, I get confused because I'm trying to follow word for word what you're saying, but then you're talking about in a world, uh -huh. in a cruel world, out there, all alone, you know. <laughs> at the end of the day, what what yes. what advice are you looking for, to ask? You're saying what advice would you give young men that don't have fathers out in the world? Yes, that just don't have a male figure in their life. I understand. See, again, lo love your story, but this is the sad story I'm talking about. You're adding all this okay, other yes. information that you shouldn't be adding. It's affecting yeah, your so, brain. So just, so just like as a grown man, a very successful male, what would you tell that young male that that don't have fathers? Needs some male guidance. Yes, yeah, I here's what know. I would, and again, that's a beautiful question and a great question, but that's how simple it should be. I already realize all the yes. other shit you're saying, and so does everybody else. How, you know, it's a cruel world, okay, and right. without a dad, you're more <laughs> likely to end up in prison, and without a dad, you're more likely to screw <laughs> up and, and end up a freaking goofball, freaking, you know, 28 earrings in your yes. eye, and, you know, walking around talking about, I don't know what I am, but whatever I am, you better pay attention to it. You know, some whack job yes. weirdo. But here's what I would say. And this is the truth. You know what I'd say? I'd say, get over it. Okay? You didn't need him anyway. Mm -hmm. You don't need your dad. Mm -hmm. Oh, people need their dad. Mm -hmm. You don't need your dad. I'd, you'd want mm -hmm. your dad. You don't need him. You don't need anybody. And that's the truth. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, you need people when mm -hmm. you're small. If you don't have anyone to rely on when you're small, you die. Do you, do you realize mm -hmm. that? An infant dies if nobody helps it. A human being, infant, mm -hmm. if left alone and unaided, would would perish. So we so we, yes. we we literally depend on people all our lives, and that's what starts to create our program that we need people. Mm -hmm. You don't need people, okay? You don't need a dad. So if you're a young man out there mm -hmm. and you're letting all these other people talk about, oh, you're gonna end up in freaking prison and you're gonna be bad and it's not good for you, don't even listen to that. Now, would it have been yeah. better? Would it have been better with the dad? Oh, 100%. Are, is a child more likely mm -hmm. with the dad? Oh, 100%. But you're telling me the ones that don't have one. Well, they don't have a choice. You don't get to go pick a dad at the dad store, do you? Exactly. Okay, so yeah. you're, you're without a dad. Okay, get over it. Stop worrying about it. It's not going to affect anything. Yes, it increased the odds. Mm -hmm. Yes, it increased the difficulty ratio. So what? Buckle down. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the advice I'd give them. I swear to you I would. Now, some people might go, come here, let me say that nicely. Guys, that's what's wrong with the world today. Everybody's saying shit so nicely and all half-assly that it's confusing. Okay, tell people the truth. Yeah. And the truth is, is young yeah. men of the world, and I'm talking to your young men, God damn it, you want me to talk to them, didn't you? Yes. Okay, so here's, here's me talking. Now, you can argue uh, after I'm done if you don't agree, but I would say to those young men, young men, because there's a bunch of them watching. Maybe they don't have dads. Good. And maybe they're allowing Good. that to affect them. Maybe they're running that story in their head that that's why they're not yes. succeeding. Okay? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. You don't need a dad. You want a dad. Didn't happen for you. Wasn't in the cards. Nah. Get over it. That's what I would say. Get over it. Okay, use that as fuel to succeed and show everybody you
need him anyway. And guess what? Maybe one day mm -hmm. he comes back and shows up. Are you supposed to be like, oh, I don't need you. No, give him a hug and say, where you been? And run off, dog. What are you, a piece of shit? But listen oh, to his story. Maybe it wasn't a piece of shit. Maybe it was circumstances. Sometimes shit happens, guys. Forgive yep. and let live. Here's what I say to these young men. Brother, Again, let live. I don't even want to say I'm sorry. Why? I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry they don't have dads. I wish they would have. I mm -hmm. wish everybody had dads and moms and we ran through fields with daisies together. Okay, I wish that my dog doesn't shit in my house when I'm too long. And when I get home, I didn't let it out all day. So it's just house. I wish my dog didn't shit in my house too. I just got a puppy too. Yeah, well, guess what? I wish puppies didn't shit in your house. I wish you could turn kids off when they got too loud and annoying. You could just flip them off, turn them back on when you miss them. Yeah. Okay, but that's not what's real. Okay, sometimes, you know, dads disappear for whatever reason. Maybe mom was a bitch. Maybe mom cheated on him. Maybe freaking uh, uh, he's a dick. He's a loser. He's a scumbag. He's a druggie. He's an addict. He's a criminal. Like, who knows? But it ain't your fault. And it ain't going to affect you unless you let it. You Now quit being a little bitch. Okay. You were born a little kid that you're hopefully going to become a man. And dude, I'm telling you, you don't need anyone. You just need yourself to believe in yourself and stop acting like everybody in the whole world is against you. Cause you didn't have a dad. F you. Wake up, okay? You don't need a dad, okay? Now, if you can go repair a relationship because you, you were a dick or, you're, you know, it's your fault. Again, guys, don't get me wrong. Go repair all the relationships with fathers in the world. They're going to clip this up and make it look like I'm telling everybody they, don't, they shouldn't have a dad. Nobody needs a dad. F*** you. I'm not saying that, okay? I'm saying something very simple. You don't have a dad. You put the situation on the guy. He doesn't have dad. These young men that don't have dads. Okay, if they don't have dads and there ain't no dad store... I wouldn't say go get yourself a new one. Why? Well, there ain't a dad store. He, they don't get one. Oh, well, then my next move would be, okay, so, well, you know, they're more likely. Okay, being more likely don't mean shit, okay? I was more likely to end up broke, okay? But I didn't. Why? And I never thought I would. Why? Well, because, dude, I don't listen to the norm, okay? And neither should you. And the norm says without a dad, you're going to be in trouble. Dude, without a dad, you're going to be just fine. Go hug your mom twice as much and tell her thank you for don't leaving me because dude if we're young and they leave us we die yeah. but, but guess what as soon as we get a little bit older we can survive you can survive young man now go on out there and do it hit me up if you need a little help or guidance along the way that's what i would tell them why do you ask do you help young men with no fathers um i want to i see i have a young boy i have a teenager how would you help a him? younger boy I'm doing it all on my own. How, how would you help it? He See, she's got a victim mentality. I'm doing it all 15. on my own. What was that? Erica, you got a little bit of a victim mentality. Do you know how I know? How? I mean, again, you're, you're definitely like leaning in the, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be positive and I'm going to help. And, you know, you're heading in the right direction. But I can also hear a little victim mentality because of the way you talk. Like, you know, they're dads without dads and the world's going to end. And you know how sad oh, no, that just, is in this cruel world. See, and I then you see. just said, and you're not I listening see. or you wouldn't be talking. And then you just, and okay, by the way, folks, here's another rule. If you ain't listening, I'm just going to hang up anyway. Why? Well, because, dude, this ain't Erica advice. It's Brad advice. So <laughs> if you don't want my advice, what are you calling in for? And if you want my advice, then what are you talking for? You can't give me my advice, can you? My dad used to no. say, if I want your advice, I'll give it to you. No, go ahead. I forgot what I was saying now. Oh, yeah. You, oh, yeah. I got, I got it. I got it. No, you got a little victim mentality based on how you talk because what you said is, boo-hoo-hoo, these guys have no fathers. And then you just said, I'm doing it all by myself. Erica, I, I hate to tell you, you don't do all by yourself. Okay? Folks, mm -hmm. nothing is done by yourself except maybe <laughs> jacking off. Okay? Everything else is going to take a well, team. No, it's, it's, a, it's different. It's, it's just a term. It's not. I know, but that's yeah, the victim mentality, not. Erica. I want to break you of the victim okay. mentality, man. You, 
you're a powerful creature in this freaking universe and it's a and it's a universe that's vibrating. Do you understand that? Everything's moving? Yes. Okay, you have a vibration, I have a vibration, everything has a vibration. Your phone has a vibration. Fatherless kids have vibrations. Okay? Everybody yes. has a vibration. So we're going to live in a vibration world. So what you got to do is control your frequency, control your vibration. And when you're talking words, words are magical. That's why you spell them. At the end of the day, you have yeah. to watch what you say because what you're saying is painting your literal reality. So hold your tongue and quit saying limiting like I'm all alone. I'm doing it all by myself. It's victim. Yeah, I can, I can see that, how that sounds like that definitely... Uh, now, you, now you're probably going to yeah, be mad just, at me 10 minutes after we get off the call because you're going to be like, who the oh fuck no. does he think he oh is? No. I'm just oh trying no. to help oh you. No. Like, I want Erica to oh win no, because you... Up oh, here get she it. goes again. Erica, you know what? You know oh what? No. You know I love you. <laughs> see, I can't, oh, I, can't, I can't talk when someone's talking. Like, I, I, I have to overpower them just to let them know that, like, I can get louder than you. But then I think... If they're talking, they're not listening, clearly. Because when I'm talking, I'm not listening. So if they're talking, I might as well shut up. And if I might as well shut up, I might as well move on to the next caller. Jason Reed, you made it on, buddy. Brad Vice, what's cracking? If you were starting over as a professional doing your training platform, what steps would you take to redo what you have done in the beginning today in today's world? I would do exactly what I did because... It was the right thing to do. I just would have done it quicker. So my advice is, hurry up, Jason. But what is it you do? You build training systems? Well, I am in the automotive business, have been for over 20 years. And? And I am in the process of developing a website for new hire trainees to teach the basic fundamentals of the automotive industry. As with I got gotcha. you. So you're going to go train salespeople? You're going to be competing with the likes of Grant Cardone, Zig Ziglar, no, Andy no. Elliott, Joe Verde, Tom Wait. Stuker, Alan Ram, Jonathan Dawson, Charlie yes, Siegel, sir. technically Bradley, right? Technically. Dude, yes, you, dude, listen, there's enough room for all of you. So what's your, what's your, what, what advice do you want? My, what the advice I'm looking for is would the light speed technology in which you have already yes. developed? Yes, I do. Utilizing your platform software. What would I do different? Do you, is it, what would you do differently? If Nothing. Anything at all. And what, how would you invest yourself in today's world? And what kind of business plan or monetary? Dude, you're just adding just on, dude. Good. I should charge you a consultant fee, dude. This is just supposed to be a simple question. Holy shit. Dude, do we need hey, to do man, a consulting call? Well get my worth, right? Well, dude, listen, at the end of the day, it sounds like you, you want to be a trainer in the car business, or you already are. Are you making money training people in the car business, yes or no? Not yet, no, sir. I'm okay, so you're what we call a wannabe. Business. You want to do it because you're probably pretty good. You, you want to help other people get better. You think you can make some money. You think you can you know, become a freaking, you know, the next, you know, Andy Elliott or Grant Cardone. I get you, dude. It's cool. And, dude, it's worth it. It's fun. I've done it. It's cool. So good for you, but you haven't started anything. So my first advice would be to start. Okay, quit worrying about light speed and how to use it. Okay, start training people right now because you have to get your curriculum going because when you get a system like light speed, all you do is virtualize what you would have said and done in real life. So you have to do it and say it in real life in order to really understand what you were going to freaking train on and get good at it. And then you take that good content you put it in a training system that you can then customize to each and every dealership that's out there because everybody wants their own custom version of what you offer. Some are going to like you and some aren't. Well, guess what? You should make partnerships with all my other clients in the car business so you guys can co-swap customers. When they don't want you, sell Grant. When they don't want Grant, he'll sell you. We make this nice little thing called Skill Shop, which is within the system. And then all of a sudden, I'd freaking go out there and I'd say, listen, I realize as a manager of this dealership that I need to train my people because trained people outperform untrained people. So what I really need to do is I need a training system. I don't need a video and I don't need a library of videos. I don't want shelf help. I want self-help. Okay? You see the difference? Shelf help is the 
that's yep. up on the shelf that stays there. Okay, the DVDs, the CD-ROMs, and the videos. Okay, I don't want videos. I want a training system that freaking delivers good content with repetition, practice, and accountability, right? And then I want to go yep. share it with the world because it will solve their problem. Because if you're a dealership and you have a problem, or any company for that matter, and you have a problem in any area of your organization, how you fix it is you find the content that they need because they're lacking knowledge. Something's going wrong in that department. They lack knowledge. So you get this knowledge somewhere, somehow you get this knowledge and you apply it with repetition, practice, and accountability to that area of concern. Boom! Your problem goes away and everyone becomes what they call trained. So if you said, if you were going to go, if I was going to go back to the car business and do it all over, what would I do again? I would have skipped the car business altogether. Why? Well, because a lot of these GMs think they, you know, like I, it's easier to get a hold of the freaking president of Coca-Cola than it is freaking the general manager of Fletcher Jones Hyundai. You know, they get hit up all the time. Everybody and their dog can change their life. Everybody and their dog wants to get them to spend their money with them, put balloons on their lot. They get hit up all day long. So they're very hard to get a hold of. It took me forever and a day to break through the gatekeepers in that industry. But guess what? You're already in it. So the only thing I would advise you to do is don't be in it. And guess what? You're in it. Too late. So now the question is, what, <laughs> what should you do in it? Well, dude, you should be the best there's ever been. Okay? Number one, and the only way to deliver training nowadays is online. Live training is not as effective, it's not as good, and it's not as cheap. So dealers are not going to pay. I mean, don't get me wrong. You can do online or, I mean, you can do in-person events, but that's not training because there's no repetition and there's no accountability. All you do is show up and spill information and hope they get it, which is valuable. You get to rub elbows, have fun, get starstruck, take pictures, jack off for the freaking day. But in reality, the learning comes with repetition, practice, and accountability. And you don't get that in a live training session or at most live training sessions, unless it's long-term, and I don't see Grant Cardone putting on a 68-week boot camp, okay? So at the end of the day, you ain't going to learn from, from those live events. You're going to enjoy yourself and pick up some information and network and get excited. But to really learn and train people, you want to be able to deliver good content with repetition, practice, and accountability. And you want to put them in a community where they all interact, grow, develop, and like-minded people help each other at least feel that way and create what's called culture, my friend. Anyway, hope that helps. Go kill it, brother. And by the way, do you got a light speed system already? No, sir, I don't get it. No, sir. I'm just looking for advice right now. And, uh, baby, deep, 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 deep. Hey, on. you don't need advice, brother. You need 30 grand, and I can help you. Come out. Yes, sir. Ray Molina, buddy. Yes, sir. Thank you for taking my call. Well, damn, dude. I like the enthusiasm and the, and the sound of appreciation. You're goddamn welcome, Ray. I, well, thank you so much. Been waiting for like an hour, but I love it. Paid hey, off, and it was I an hour and 18 business. minutes to be exact. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Hey, uh, I have a, a, a business partner. We've been in business for four, uh, four years. This is My a story. You wouldn't want me to hang up on someone who waited an hour to get through, would you? Absolutely not. Then, then don't tell me a story. My Okay, I need to scale my business. There's a sales guy that is a great salesman, but I don't have the salary to pay him. But he wants to become a partner with me. Bop! And we're trying to... Bop, 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 bop. Good salesmen don't cost you money, brother. Awesome. Again, you said you can't afford awesome. to hire him, right? I can't afford to pay a salary right now. And that's exactly what he told me. He just wants to partner up with me. Yeah, just like a good fisherman don't need you to pack him a lunch. Okay, a good hunter doesn't need you to feed him and pack him a meal. Dude, good salesmen make money, okay? They earn you money. They don't cost money. Everybody's got that backwards. They're sitting there, I need to hire a salesman, but I can't really scale because we can't afford to pay the guy. Dude, you don't pay the guy in salary. You pay the guy in commission, and then you start to reveal which ones are actually good and which ones aren't, because if they need a salary, it's because they can't sell anything. I love it. Well, I mean, honestly, dude, how, what, what, what product are you selling? Quick, quick answers. Look, I have a, I have a uh, on-site mobile shredding business. I have four trucks. Okay, so what product do you sell, real quick? Uh, paper destruction. And how much is it for me? We, for you? For, I, for, you it's, for you, it's nothing, Brad. You're taking my call. For other customers, I do $125. That covers the ten, uh, first 10 bankers' boxes worth of documents. 
Okay, and, w- and what cities are you in? I am in San Diego, San Diego, California. Okay, so in San Diego, California, you're a business with it. If you want your paper shredded, old Ray Molina shows up, dumps up to a couple buckets worth. Yes, sir, for 125 bucks. Right, and this salesman, what if he went out and sold two a day? How much do you pay him when he sells one? Well, that's what I don't know. I'm trying to figure that out. <laughs> well, what's it worth for you to sell one? Well, it's 125 bucks is what I is what I charge. I didn't say that. I said, what's it worth to you as a business when you sell one? Good salesmen make you money. You want ten of them, brother. You want fifteen of them. Hire them immediately. Okay. If you if you if people need big fat salaries, it might be because it might be because. If I sell a bunch of your shit and I'm really good, I'm not making any money because you ain't charging any money. Gotcha. I got it. I got so, it. Thank you so much, Brad. Oh, no, no, no. Listen, don't, don't run now. I want you to understand it. Do you? Absolutely. But do you understand what I'm saying, bro? I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to be smart ass. No. No, no, no. I know you're not. I do understand what you're saying. So what am I saying? Um... You're saying that I have to get a sales guy to make more money on my in my company. On my no, 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 no. Dude, listen, that's not what I said. I'm saying you asked the question, Brad. I, I I can't afford to hire these guys. He wants equity in my company. You were about to say, hey, should I give him some equity or should I do this? Dude, listen. First of all, I want everybody and you to specifically to understand. Here's my advice: Don't hire salespeople that require salaries. Okay, because if you do. You're not going to get very good ones. Or you might get a good one, but you, you're, in other words, like, like I never got a salary in my whole life as a salesman. Actually, I take that back. I did once. Um, I got a salary and commission. But I got less commission, and I didn't have the choice because it wasn't an option. I'm one of the best salesmen in the world. Do you understand? And I swear to God, anybody that freaking hears what I'm saying, including Yahshua himself, Bring me the person that's better than me at sales and closing so we can have a freaking competition. I think I'm that good. And here's what I'd tell you. I wouldn't need a salary to come sell your shit. If, pay attention, if I could actually make a living by selling it. In other words, if I went out and sold and broke records and I made 88 bucks on your pay plan, you'd never get me and you must pay a salary now. And that's not a salesman. That's an order taker, okay? And it's, a, and it's not a salesman. So don't call them a salesman. If you're paying them a salary, dude, they're more than likely not a salesperson. And in your case, because of the price model, it's only 125 bucks. I mean, I'd need to sell a lot of those even at 100% commission. What, what, what commission are you paying? Well, I, I don't have anybody yet. I don't have a salesman. I know. What commission are you planning on paying? Well, I was thinking 25% of each sale, but that's not the only thing we sell. So 25% of 125, how much is it? Quick, Lane. What do we got? You see, you got to do the math. What is that, 30, 30 no, some bucks? Yeah, it's probably 30, 30 some bucks. I don't know. I got a fun calculator. I should have made it easy. Okay, you're paying, you're paying, 20, you're paying 25% on, on, on 100, let's say. Put 25 into a pack. Put it in a pack. So now it's 100 Okay, so you owe them 25 bucks to sell it. Well, how much does a salesman need to make a day? A good salesman or a decent salesman should be making at least, at least $300 a day or come work for me. Because, dude, if they're working for you and they sell the shit out of it like nobody's business and they don't even make 300 bucks, then your pay plan's screwed up. You need to pay them more. And by the way, you could pay up to 100% of the first month because, because you're, you're charging $125 a month. So an account isn't worth one twenty-five to you. An account is worth whatever they stay for. So if I'm giving you one twenty-five a month for a year, now you can pay me five hundred bucks up front. Now your problem isn't salespeople; it's capital. Because how are you going to pay me in advance? Well, it's called you raise debt. Now I don't want to get too far into it right now because it sounds like you're just starting out. So here's what I'd say: Go get your beak wet. Okay, go start selling shit yourself and see if it sustains you. If it sustains you, then let's move on and get some salespeople involved. If it can't sustain you, it can't sustain a salesman. Can I get a come on? Come on, baby. Love it. Question, folks. Last question of the night. 
you're on well, Brad Vice. I had a nice bag this month, six figures, thank you, Lord. And I want to know how to move the money, where to put the money. I know you said save the money, stack the money, but you know, if you just hand somebody fifty thousand dollars, they won't know what to do with it. I'm wondering what advice you have. Almost sounds like a prank call, but I'll answer you because if you just got a fat bag, first of all, I'd raise your thinking because a hundred K ain't fat. That's like a nice bag, it ain't a fat bag. Fat bag seven figures. Okay. So a hundred K, nice little chunk of change. Here's what you do with it. You stick it in the bank and you save it because there's a correction coming. And those with the cash mm -hmm. will be able to win like nobody's business. Stack your cash. Do not do anything with it unless it's unbelievable. I wouldn't, I wouldn't invest in anything right now. Why? Because I need cash. I need capital. Cash. A lot of times you'll hear cash is trash. Well, this isn't one of those times. Right now, cash is king. Why? Because pretty soon, brother, there's going to be some pain and suffering. And during those pain and sufferings, especially if certain people are elected, by the way, but it's going to happen no matter who's elected. Pain's coming. Correction's coming. And when it comes, those with the cash are going to be able to win big. So if you invest now and then the time crashes and you don't have the cash, who's buying your asset? Nobody. Now you're not even li li liquidable. Liquable. Liquidatable. Mm -hmm. You're screwed, bro. You're screwed. So, so I would say don't do anything with your cash. Put it in the bank and wait and keep your eyes peeled. And when the market corrects and the real estate starts to drop, there's going to be deals everywhere, bro. And then you put that money into real estate, dog, real estate. Now, if, you're, if you've got a high risk tolerance, well, then I'd start looking at how to do a little bit of freaking uh, cryptocurrency, little freaking coins, a little bit of freaking Forex. Well, I, I, I wholesale houses, so I was thinking... Again, hey I'd, hey, I'd keep wholesaling houses while you're doing it. How, why? Because that's how you stack cash. But you want my advice, my right. Brad advice, my, my last piece of advice for the evening... Before I go smoke a big yeah. fat Monte Cristo number two and <laughs> dream of someday Leland Charles, little chubby Leland, calling me on the phone and having a conversation. Mono e mano. You know, a lot of people think mono e mano means man to man. You know what it means, anybody? Hand to hand. Nom hand. Anyway, so. My brother, I would say stack that cash, dog. Don't don't blow it. I know when you get a hundred grand and you got a little fat sack and it starts to burn a hole in your bank. It's like, dude, what do I do with it? Do I get a Corvette? Should I go open a business? What should I do? Everybody wants me to do all this. Uh, should I give it to Brad? Should I give it to this course? Should I should I go to university? Should I should I should I buy a house? Should I should I flip a car? Should I no, dude? You should stick it in the bank and hold on to it because so many more opportunities are coming, but you're gonna need cash. So I would hold on, do it big dog. Come on. Come on. Right. Clicky, clicky. All right, buddy. Hey, let's go to the comments real quick. Let's take a few from the old Instagram comment. Why do you think a crash is coming? Matt, come on, brother. You already know. And I didn't say a crash is coming. I said a correction is coming. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't buy stocks either right now. Hell no. Let's go. Who the is Leland. Leland is the hater. Lee C1027. Everybody go send him some love. He was making some real rude comments. Anyway, you and John Sarasani should do a boxing match for a fundraiser. Who would win? Dude, John Sarasani's a pretty big You know, I don't know. Does he know how to box? Let's ask him real quick. Let's ask him. I'll say, John! Hold on. Call John Sarasani. Hello, you've reached the cell phone of John. Please leave a message and I will get back to you. Thanks. At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. Hey, John. Brad Lee, how you doing, man? There's a whole bunch of people on TikTok talking shit about you, bro. Hit me back as quick as possible. It's your boy Brad, Brad Lee. You know my number. Okay, call me back quickly, my friend. Quickly. It's an emergency. I'm joking, dude. Somebody asked if who would fight between 
me and you. And I'm like, he's got the size. Let's get him on the phone. I don't know if he knows how to fight, though. I mean, if you, if you have no idea how to fight, then I'd probably give him a little whooping. But, dude, have you guys seen John Sarasani? Yeah, he's a big old dude. Like, if he knows how to fight, too, dude, I don't want to box him. You know, I might get my ass whooped. But anyway, I figured I'd get you on the phone. I'm on a live call-in show, and I figured we'd just settle it right here, right now. But they want me to do a celebrity boxing match with you. You know, maybe we get into a celebrity boxing match. Winner take all! How to plan to become a millionaire? Dude, you already made the plan by saying, how do I make a plan to become a millionaire? Okay, you make a plan to become a millionaire by saying, I'm going to be a millionaire. You, that's how you start the plan. You don't freaking, you don't question it ever. You know you're going to be a millionaire and you plan by starting with, I'm going to be a millionaire. That's the first thing you do. Then second thing you do is you freaking start to figure out how am I going to solve problems for people because to become a millionaire, all you have to do is help people solve problems. If you can help see people solve problems, brother, I'm telling you, you're going to freaking be in a much better situation and you're going to guarantee yourself millions of dollars in revenue. So step one, okay, know that you can do it. Make a decision to do it. And then step two, find out how you're going to do it, which is essentially some way to help somebody. Now he's fighting with my guests. Come on, Leland. Leland. Lee C1027, man. Where it, I wonder where that guy lives. I know, but you can't give them any attention. You give haters attention, then everyone starts hating, so they get attention. The next thing you know, you turn into a big hate fest. You just ignore the haters, man. I'll bet you anything he thinks I'm good looking, and he's probably a little bit pissed because his wife does too. Right now he's thinking, dude, this Brad's a good looking man. I mean, if I, if I, if I was going to be gay, I'd probably be gay for him. Um, all right, let's go. Come on, come on. Brad, buy or rent? Buy. Um, right now... If you're renting, stay renting, put your money away, and stack your cash. But between buy and rent, like over long term, buy all day long. All right, guys, I think uh, it's 718, and I got to have a cigar and a steak before I go hit the gym so I can get my neck in shape so Leland won't hate on me next time. Thanks for watching, fellas. Peace out.